Hello everyone, this is Randy Malden. I want to check in a little bit early just before we get started to make sure my sound is working. So if you can hear me, please type in the chat box that you can hear me. That way I know my sound's good and I don't do a whole presentation with you just watching my lips move. So, all right, good, very good, awesome. Thank you, I appreciate that. Let me know that we can be heard, which is always a benefit when presenting. And you would be surprised how many times I've started talking and everybody's like, hey, your microphone is not working or your presentation is not showing or something like that, where I think I'm doing the right things. But at the end of the day, it's just not working the way I think it should be working. So very good. All right. Well, it is the top of the hour and I never want to punish the punctual. So you're on time. Let's go ahead and begin. Welcome to the supply chain management training boot camp, which results in the CPSM certification when you follow our process, go through our training, do what we tell you to prepare, prepare and take the exams. We are going to take care of you to make sure you are squared away. My name is Randy Malden. I am the founder of Supply Leaders Academy and the CPSM certification boot camp. And we've been doing this since 2010. 10. So we have a lot of experience. We've gone through the different iterations of the exam and what we tell you to do works. Okay. People pass the exam when they follow our system. Even lately, people decide to do their own thing and then they're kind of wondering, well, why didn't I pass the exam? So we have a coaching call because we have a guarantee. I get the opportunity to talk with folks so they'll share with me why they're not successful, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And the number one thing is they don't follow the strategy, meaning they don't do what we tell them to do. OK, so we're going to have a good presentation here. We're going to have several questions. And at the end, which is going to be a whole lot of fun, we're going to have a competition. So pay attention. We're going to have some questions and then you have the opportunity to win a ten dollar Amazon gift card that you can use and spend on anything. And we do that throughout the training every day at the end of the training. Everyone competes not for ten, but for twenty five dollars where you get to compete for that with everyone else in the class. And some people got very good about preparing for the class, answering the questions, and they, they got a little bit of, you know what I'm saying, a little chang chang there going on. So let's go ahead and let me share my screen. And we are going to get started here. Share my screen application right there. All right. And let me go ahead and go into full presentation mode. All right, we're all squared away. Again, welcome to our orientation boot camp. This is for those that can make it great. You're gonna have an opportunity to win some money. For those who are watching the replay, this is to help you understand how to get involved in the classroom to make sure that this is the most interactive training that you can participate in. The main feedback, the most positive feedback I've heard since we've been doing this since September of last year, we started this because of the COVID, we started to do it online, is that it's interactive, fast paced, go, 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 go. It's where people can't do other things besides the training when they're involved in the training. And how do we do that? We use this application right here. So go ahead and pull up another web browser window and go to this website right here, pollev.com, and put in the code SCMJOBS1550. This is the application we are going to use to ask questions, and that way you're going to participate. You get to answer those questions, and it's not just A, B, or C. We've got all kinds of fun stuff, short answers, long answers, pictures, uh, surveys, all kinds of good stuff just to keep things going. And we have questions at the end of every section throughout the different sections. And we're going to experience that as we're going through our training here this afternoon. So go ahead and pop up and make sure you have any web browsers and we're going to give it a shot. Let's see if it works. Last time this one didn't work so well. So what I would like for you to do is anywhere on the map, just tell us where you are from. All right. Very good. As you can see, yeah, we got people from Tennessee, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, way up north on the West Coast. And I can tell you we're going to have a few folks from Shanghai way over here. We might have some folks from the Netherlands up over here during the training. 
So we have people from all over the world. In the last class, we had people from Germany, Trinidad. So we've got people from all over the world participating in this training. So you can tell that it's going to be a lot of fun because when we break out into team groups, you get to learn and network with other people as well. OK, why is this important? Why should you do this certification? One thing I had a survey at the end of the year from Smart Asset, which basically said purchasing managers have job growth of 57 percent from 21, 2015 to 21, 2019. All right. And we're going into 2021. A lot of significant growth growth for purchasing managers. So it's definitely in the right place because there are many opportunities out there. And with the COVID pandemic, a lot of people realize the value of good supply chain professionals that know what they're doing based on training and experience, not just ad hoc ad hoc guesses and hopes. When people implement supply chain management, they are successful. They can see that a two and a half percent savings results in the same amount of profit as an increase in sales by 10%. Now that number can fluctuate based on your margin, but the point is the same. When you save money, it immediately goes to the bottom line for profit. Now for nonprofits and government agencies, that means you're finite budget goes a lot further when you use it properly. Those companies that use supply chain management as a strategy are 73% more profitable, like Walmart and Toyota. And when people engage in supply chain management projects, they see a 40% return on their investment. So just imagine their investment in you, your investment in yourself in this training, you can expect a 40% ROI, meaning you're going to learn things that are going to make you more valuable, that's going to equal promotions, not because you're certified, but because you're bringing skills to the table that people see as valuable. Now, this plays out when we look at our ISM salary survey for 2020. Those with the CPSM certification are earning an average of 125,000, okay, up 5.4% from the previous year. And those with the CPSD, the supplier certified professional supplier diversity, which is an additional certification you get in our package. We give you the training so you can get the certification are earning $130,000. Okay. And that's an increase of 3.9%. So the numbers are there. The salary survey says you're doing the right things and are in the right career field. What does it take to get CPSM certified? You must have a bachelor's degree and three years experience. But if you do not have a bachelor's degree, you can still earn this certification with five years experience in a supply chain man management position other than a clerk, meaning you're not just processing purchase orders, you're actually involved in planning, running RFPs, negotiations, contract management, logistics, warehouse management. All of these functions are supply chain management that are not clerical in nature. Okay. And you pass the CPSM exams, which we're going to show you how to do. And then you apply, which we also show you how to apply to make sure you get your certification. What's in the exam itself? Exam one is focused on the supply management core, the core processes required to run supply chain in any organization. They're mainly focused on procurement activities, contract management, procurement RFPs, negotiations, different processes, contracts, how to run contracts, logistics, vendor management, vendor relationship management, all of these things are involved in the supply management core. That's exam one. That's the first week what we're going to cover next week, week one. The second week is week two, supply management integration. Where we take the things from exam one and we integrate those together to function within the organization. So now we're starting to look at quality improvements, starting to look at strategy, starting to look at logistics as well here. Okay, getting a little bit more into depth, a lot of other areas that are important to integrate the supply chain throughout your organization and in the supply chain. And then we have leadership and transformation, which is when we take things from exam one and exam two, and we have to convince people, build consensus, to get things done, we want to follow the things we learn in leadership and transformation. Okay, this is where we take what we've learned up to this point and we apply it. How do we get people to buy in? What are some things that we need to be aware of when it comes to leadership? You need to understand all of this to be able to pass any of the exams. I share that with you to tell you that you can't come and just focus on exam one and expect to pass because there's information on exam two found on exam one. 
And same thing with exam three, it's found on exam one. So we go through all the content through the boot camp. You take the diagnostic test, which I'll share with you a little bit later. And then whichever exam you do best on, that's the certification you take first. You take first, meaning that's the one you're most competent in. So you go for that exam, you pass it, you build confidence, you experience the test, and then you take the next best. And then the third best, you go through that process. All right. What does it look like with the exam? You have 165 questions in the shorter exams, which exams two and three, and 180 questions on the long exam, which is exam one. You have one minute per question. So when you're practicing diagnostic tests, you have one minute. Practice that. You don't get any more time. If you take a break, you lose that time. Okay. And to pass, you must have a 400 out of 600, meaning a 66%. And if you have 150 scored questions, how many questions can you miss and still pass the test? 50 questions. Now that becomes important when we talk about the strategy next week because you're going to skip questions, right? And you say, well, I need to answer all these questions. Well, there's a strategy that helps you focus on those things you know. And so you skip questions. And if you skip 50 questions, can you still pass the test? Yes, you can. But we'll talk about that next week. We'll talk about that next week. When we prepare for the exams, what do we do? We study the materials. We review the materials, looking at the uh, boot camp and the worksheets, which I'll talk about later. We take our diagnostic test, practice how you're going to play, meaning sit quietly in an area for three hours, one minute per question, three hours undisturbed. And then you must pass the diagnostic test before you take the real exam. Now, this. When we take the diagnostic test and we pass it, it tells us, one, we're ready for the test, and two, passing is required for our guarantee, meaning if you're not successful on the exams, we pay the re-exam fees for you, which is a good thing. But you have to do what we tell you and pass the diagnostic test before you take the real exams. Once you pass the diagnostic test, or even if you don't, you send us your results, we analyze it, we send you a study plan, and we give you coaching. Use the coaching. You'll be surprised how many people go through the training, and then they never call ever again, and they're just gone. All right, but I'm here to help you. I'm definitely here to help you. What kind of time do you need to commit? If you're going to get this done within 30 days after the boot camp, you're looking to commit two to three hours per night, five days a week. Now, if you're going to do 90 days after the boot camp, an hour a day is sufficient to go through all the content, take your diagnostic test, focus on your areas of weakness, and then take your certification exams as you need to based on how well you do on the diagnostic test. Eat healthy and be aware of your addictions. What do I mean by this? What do I mean by this is if you drink a lot of coffee, like I do, like what goes in must come out. If you're going to sit for three hours for an exam, be aware that if you drink a lot of coffee on your way in to wake yourself up, eventually you're going to have to go to the bathroom. And when you take a break to go to the bathroom, that time, that time is gone. You don't, they don't stop the clock. Once you start the test, the clock goes all the way through. And then once it's over, that's it. Okay. And if you take a break, then you lose that time. So you want to practice that experience. If you're a smoker, same thing. If we had a young lady who was skinny as a rail, but she was addicted to food and she, she had to eat, she was constantly eating. So she had to be aware of that. So she could sit for three hours to maintain that, uh, uh eating that she needed to do every day. Okay. Now, Accessing the virtual classroom. If you're in this training, you know how to access the virtual classroom because you're here. If you're watching the replay, what you want to do is you're going to receive an email just like this. We're going to send this out Monday for the virtual training for week one. And we send one out Monday for week two and one Monday for week three. Click the register now. It's going to bring, bring not up here where you confirm the schedule, down here where it says register now. And then it's going to bring you to this page right here. Click register, put in your first name, last name, and the email that we use to register you. And then it's going to send you a click for a link right here. And then when it's time to begin the test, you want to reload your web browser. Reload your web browser so that 
if it's like normally it should just kick in and it'll automatically start working but if for some reason it's 1 p.m eastern and things start to happen and your screen's not resetting and it's not working the way it should work then you need to just reload your web browser and everything should come up and work okay if you're and we'll talk about latency and other issues here in a few slides but just know that reloading the web browser is number one uh, troubleshooting action to get things back on track. Okay, once you come in, it's going to give you this where it's going to checking, make sure you are good to go. You probably see this, click continue, and then you'll be in the web page just like we are right here. Now, this is where you see me and you see our, uh, our presentation. Okay, and now I'm going to go over what's going on over here because this is what we use to make sure we manage ourselves during the training. So this is our sidebar. At the very top is info. That's where it gives you information about the session itself. Next is questions. This is where you type in questions, not comments, not, oh, by the ways, not things you're trying to do to communicate and, and link with the class. But if you have an actual question that you want me to answer, you type it here in the question box. Okay, because at the end of each section, I go into the, I come out and I go right into here. And I look for questions and we pause and we ask those questions, answer those questions immediately before we move on to the next section. This does a couple things. It, one, it clarifies the information so you can continue to move through. It makes sure that I'm engaged with you, clarifying things and make sure our materials on track because I intend to go pretty quickly, but that pause in between each section gives me a moment to breathe and slow down and engage to make sure everyone is aware. Now the polls are, we're going to use the poll everywhere application, which we're going to see here in a second. All right. And then if you have any chats, which you guys use to help me do my sound check, and then I'll ask uh, questions, general questions throughout the training. Hey, what do you think about this? This would be a place to type that. But if you have a specific question, make sure you come up here to the question area to type in that question so that I answer it. As you'll see, as you go through the training and you have 20, 30, hundreds of people in training, they're all making comments. You could ask a question here and then 10 other people ask a question, make a comment and they, and all of a sudden your question's hidden. I don't see it. So that's why you put it in the questions. Okay. That's why you want to use that. Handouts. You'll see this. This is also available in your training portal. It's already there. I'm going to show you where that is here in a second. All right. That's where the handouts are, but they will also be posted in the virtual classroom. So if for any reason you misplace them or whatever and you need one, then you can pull it out right here. And then this last piece down here is if I ask a question for the general audience to respond, then this would be where you would request open mic and interact and, and answer your questions or ask, answer the question I've asked. And that way we able to have a conversation. What I found is I don't do this very often because there is latency. I'll ask a question and I think it's instantaneously going out, but it travels through cyberspace all the way to the other side of the country, other side of the world. And that all takes time. So by the time I ask a question, does anyone have a comment? Please open your mic and respond. That happens five, 10 seconds later. And then someone answers. By then I've moved on because I didn't see a response on my side. Instead, we use the app that you're experiencing now. It allows people to answer instantaneously. It keeps us engaged and we're not waiting for uh, latency to uh, catch up with us, that kind of thing. Okay, down here with notes, you can take notes, but I'm gonna have another place where you take notes here in a little bit called the worksheets, which are very important. Now, question, where would you click? I'm gonna say, where would you click to do dot, 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 and just click on the screen. Most important, where would you click to ask me a question, a specific question? Correct. Right here in the questions, okay? Not the chats, but in the actual questions, all right? Because every time we take a break in between sections, I go right to the questions and I answer any questions. We'll take a break. I'll say, go ahead and type your questions into the question box. We'll break for five or 10 minutes. We'll come back and then I'll address those questions. And that way everyone's, you know, make sure that you're clear with content we're moving through. Now, if you just want to make a general content comment, where would you click? Chat, correct. Just a general comment. Hey, oh, by the way, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Chat. Now, where would you find any handouts required 
for training for the week. All the training will be right there. Exactly right there in the handouts. It'll all be there. Okay. There's a little bit of redundancy in all, all kinds of different places in the training portal. You have the documents there. We're going to put them here. We're going to put them everywhere just so you definitely have them and you can continue to get everything that you need. Very good. And this is an example of how we use the Everywhere Pull app, Pull Everywhere app to keep people engaged. And it's a little bit different than just pick A, B, or C, right? You got to find things and we'll actually have open questions. Now, at the end of every session, when I exit out, immediately will pop up this window. You'll actually see it today. When we exit, you'll see test, or, or it won't say test, this was a, just a, for me to capture the information, but it'll say rate the session and give me some feedback. I take this feedback for immediate action. So if I'm slow, if I'm fast, if I'm doing something you don't particularly like, just this is the opportunity to tell me so I can correct it before the next day or the next week. Okay. A lot of times it's like, hey, you're going too fast. All right. I'm out. And it tells me, it reminds me to slow down because we have a ton of content to go through, as you've seen, right? Okay. A ton of content. So this is where you just give me feedback. Hey, I like this. I didn't like that. Could you do this differently? This will be the place to do that so that we can immediately take action to keep the class improving and engaged with you. Now, make sure your machine is prepared for the class because it's digging or taking a lot of bandwidth from your network, all right? And the best way to make sure you are have the most optimal performance is make sure all other applications are turned off. Meaning if you have email going, that's okay, but if you have email, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, web browser going, watching sports and doing all this other stuff, that's all gonna eat up bandwidth, which is gonna slow down your connection which is going to cause latency. Okay. We don't want that. All right. We want to make sure you're engaged. If you start to experience latency, then just exit out of the browser, turn everything off, restart your browser, and you should come right back up. So long as the class is running, you can get into that class. No problem. All right. If you're still having issue, turn all your apps off, turn your website off, restart your computer, and then come back to the same link you used to start the class. All right. So, just restart the computer and make sure everything's in the minimum. If you are experiencing any latency, most likely it's your connection. Okay, the best connection is a hardwire connection. It's going to keep you going pretty good. If you're using wireless, anyone else on the network that's drawing stuff like your kid, your spouse who's also working, doing all this other stuff, watching videos or anything else, that's all going to draw bandwidth. It's going to slow down your network and it could affect the classroom experience. So if you're seeing a lot of latency, right, and you're not, you're like, hey, my computer's not running that quite, something's wrong, it's most likely your connection and you just need to restart your computer, make sure your connection is good to go and you should be good to go. Normally what I do every day is I shut down my computer, I turn everything off, I clear my cache on my internet browsers, I turn everything off again, reset everything, and then just have two applications running. One email just in case someone wants to communicate with me and the Showtime app to keep everything going. That's what I do every day. And I'll just share with you what I do. And if you choose to do that, that's great. If not, that's okay. All right. Now, what's our backup plan? If for any reason my connection goes down, the world ends and the network actually runs out of internet, whatever it might be. What's our backup plan? Showtime has a crash, the app we're using right now. What's our backup plan? If things get crazy on my side, Okay, then what we're going to do, I'm going to shut it down. I'll make an announcement. Hey, I'm shutting down Showtime. Stand by for a link from me from Google. You'll get the email in a few minutes. At that time, I'll shut everything down. You'll know I will send you a Google meeting, a Google meeting link. It'll go to you. Click in. Everyone shows up. We pick up right where we left off. So that's our backup plan. Okay. So far, we've been pretty lucky. We haven't had to use it yet. But if that happens, that is our backup plan. All right. Now, let's take a look at the portal. Everyone should have been engaged in there a little bit so far. If not, or if you're watching this to kind of decide if this is the training you want to involve yourself in, let me share with you our training portal. This is on our supply chain, supply chain management dot training URL. Okay. Come right here and you'll go to the login up here. When you click login, it's going to bring you to the login screen here. You'll put in your email and your password. Once you do that, it's going to bring you into my classes. 
This is where all your classes are going to be. If you're enrolled in anything else, they'll show up here as well as supply chain management certification. That's all the one we are involved in here. Just click down here, view class, and it's going to bring you into the classroom. All right. This is a short video that's going to show you things I'm getting ready to show you right now. So if you forget anything, that's OK. This good looking guy right here. What you see right here is uh, we're coaching. Right. If you need any kind of coaching, click this link right here. It's going to bring you to my schedule. It's synchronized. So if there's an opportunity, a window of time on that schedule, it's available for you. If there's an op you don't have you don't that time doesn't work for you. Send me an email and we'll schedule something else. OK, just it's right here. Click it. We'll schedule a call. Get on the phone. Answer your question quickly so you can move on. OK, if you're feeling frustrated, you're not sure what's going on. The content's not making sense. You're feeling overwhelmed with everything. You're just not sure what to do next. Click it. Make a coaching call. We get on the phone. We get things answered and we get you calmed down and you can focus on what you need to learn. All right. Next thing I want you to do is go over here to click start here. OK, it's going to bring you in to start here. That's going to give you all the different things uh, that you need to know. OK, uh, let's go here. You set up a coaching call, the learning system. This is where we just verify that you actually have it. I'm going to go over that in a few seconds. The preparation process, which I've talked about a little bit before. Down here is the exam strategy and test taking skills, which I'll talk about next week. You can watch that here. Uh, and then a few other things right here. OK, so just go down there. That's where you want to start to learn how to engage in the course. The next thing you want to do let's make sure we're good. OK, is go to the downloads. So whenever you come into the session, go right up here to supply management core exam one. It's going to bring you to this page right here. OK, downloads. When you click downloads, You'll see up here, up in the top, this is where you see the case studies, the worksheets, and sample questions and answers. This is all supporting material for the training. The number one thing you need to download and have ready to go is the worksheets. I recommend you download those, print them off, and use that to take your notes. At the end of every day, you want to fill in the worksheets, which I'll go over here in a second and make sure you're keeping up with the content because the worksheets tell you what you need to know for the test. For those of us that are familiar with enabling learning objectives and turning terminal learning objectives, learning objectives of a class, this is what you need to know and that's in the worksheet. So it tells you this, that, be able to describe dot, 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 define this, define that. It's telling you exactly what you need to study. So it takes all that content you've received, all this on-demand training and tells you how to focus your attention okay then you go to a lesson we want to cover the lesson uh, before exam one for example you want to go through all of task one alpha or one to all of task one which is exam one go through all of this before we begin the boot camp that will prepare you best for the boot camp if you don't have time that's okay OK, don't worry about it. And, you know, the difference is twenty five dollars. Those that go through the worksheet or go through the the videos and come to class prepared, they end up winning more than those that come not prepared. So if you're motivated and want to earn a little extra, you know, money, come prepared. Watch the videos. Be ready for class next week. If you don't have time, don't worry about it. We'll catch you up at the end of the day. The gatekeeper before you take the certification exams is the diagnostic test, the diagnostic test. OK, so you click a lesson, you come in here, go into a lesson, watch the video. When you're done with the video, when the video ends, click complete lesson. This tracks your progress in the system. This lets me know you've gone through it. OK, where does this become an issue? This becomes an issue. OK, when you're ready for the exam or for some reason you don't pass the exam, I'm going to come into the system. Well, did you watch all the videos? Did you take the diagnostic test? Do I have your score? Do I have we had a coaching call? All those different things come into play when you want us to pay for the re-exams. OK, so that's why we get to do that. But you want to make sure you track your progress, complete the lesson, mark that, and then it will show you your progress. You kind of see it up here. OK, category progress right there. OK, you see that right there. OK, that's what we're tracking. 
right now what are the worksheets when you download the worksheets you'll download those from the portal where i showed you print it use it to take notes this is what it looks like okay task one alpha identify and define eight typical steps in the sourcing cycle the presentation for that day will give you the eight typical steps in the sourcing cycle. You just have to fill it in. Okay. You also have that information in your study guide, which I'll show you here in a second. And it's also in the online training. So you'll get the answers. You'll find it either through the lecture in the virtual boot camp or in the online modules or in the study guide. That's where you'll find the answer. If you're still struggling to figure out the answer, the next step is to email me, Randy. I can't find the eight steps for the sourcing cycle. Where can I find it? I'll respond. Hey, it's on page dot, dot, dot. Go right there. That way you're not struggling spending hours trying to figure out where something is. Get your questions answered and move through the content. That's what we're here for. Okay. I don't want you struggling with the content. I want you to learn it, master it, and take your exams. Now, through each day, most days, there's a couple days we don't, but each day we do a case study where we actually put everyone in a team conference room. The way the team conference room works is you must have a Google account for this to work because we use Google Meetings. The application we use uses Google Meetings to set up the conferences conference rooms. So what will happen? I will come in. I'll say, OK, I'll sign everyone to a color on a team. I will put that link in the chat box. You'll click that link and it will take you to your conference room where you have three to five other people and you'll go through the case study. Case studies usually take about five, maybe 10 minutes. A lot of times the team answers the question within five minutes and then they talk to get to know each other. And that's where you start to network. OK, do the current situation. We don't see a lot of face to face networking. Here's another opportunity to connect with people here. You may find an opportunity for your next career, next step in your career, or you may have an opportunity and you'll find the solution inside that room. Somebody that can do that work for you. So this is a good opportunity to build your network while you're doing it and then connect with them on LinkedIn. But that's a different conversation. This is what it looks like. OK, everyone's in there. You can see everyone there. OK, you do not need a camera if you're like me and have it prepared for the day, then you don't really want a camera. OK, but you do need a microphone. Usually a, a noise canceling microphone works best because there's always a dog barking or something happening in the background that can be very distracting for everyone else. So if you don't have a headset like me, like right now, I have a headset with this on because I have dogs, I have kids, I have all this other stuff going on and you don't need to know that, right? So instead I have a headset on and we're good to go. But this is what it looks like. You'll come in here, do the case study, answer your questions, and then go back and I'll bring everyone back to the room. And then I will present the answer. There will be an everywhere poll set up to where you can respond to that question. And then once we go through that answer, answer any other questions, and then we will continue on with the lesson. So we do that once a day, we go through a case study as a team. And if we have time, we'll do another case study where I'll just read it and we'll talk about it as a group. Remember, we got three, three and a half hours each day to go through a ton of content. So that's how we do it. Now, the learning system. Let me back out of here. I want to show you the learning system. All right, stop sharing. Smiley face. Okay, now, should have received books, seven books. Make sure, can you see that? Is it working? Uh, too much bright. All right. All right, uh, make sure you can see that. Oops, too much sun. Anyway, not enough sun. Anyway, so this is one who has a study guide. You'll see at the top right up here, it'll say CPSM study guide. This is the main resource you use to prepare for the exams. This is the worksheet outline that you're going to write. You're going to fill in that lot of information is right here by task. So you go right in for task one, alpha one. Go right there, go to that page. You have the information you need to answer that worksheet question. This is the main content you're going to use. Now, you also have the professional series. The professional series is not used very often, but it's still useful. We only go to the professional series after we've done a diagnostic test and we're trying to find more information about something. Okay, so this will be where you use this, but most people don't really use this. Most people don't even open the, the package. So just kind of set this aside. If we need it, we'll pull it out and I'll let you know. The next piece of information, the next 
tool you use. You got the study guide and then you have the diagnostic test. So right here at the top, it'll say diagnostic practice exams. As you finish week one, exam one, you'll want to take diagnostic test for exam one. Send those results to me. I send back to you a study plan. And then the next week you have week two. Then take the diagnostic test for week two. Same thing. And then we do week three. Then at the end of the boot camp, you look at all your test scores for exams one, two, and three. And whichever one you do best on, that's the one you want to take first. Okay. So you have a total of seven books, three study guides, three professional series, and one diagnostic test. Okay. If you don't have that yet, it has not arrived please email me because most of us, when you invest in this training, got the package that was all inclusive and included the CPSM learning system. If you don't have it or for whatever reason it's not there yet, let me know. We'll track it down, see where it is. All right. Very good. Now let me go ahead and pull up the uh, share my screen again. All right. Share screen share. Here, we'll continue to go through that. All right. There we go. Go. All right. Back on target. Okay. So those are the course materials that you should have. Again, seven books. You should have those in place. Two packages. One's a study guide, some diagnostic test, and the other is the professional series. They do have an online version that you could purchase. The, the reason we provide you the printed copy and not the online version, the printed copy you keep forever. The online version you only have access to for 12 months. Okay. So that's why we give you the printed copy. So you have that resource forever and versus going through all the training and then 12 months, it all expires and disappears. Instead, you have the, the print forever. All right. Good to go. Now, just to kind of give you an overview of how things are going to work or how you should approach your study. One, complete all the modules in the training portal for the week before the week or exam one, then, you know, try and get it done before exam one starts. If not, then each night kind of watch the videos to prepare for the class. Prepare well for the class, your chances of winning money are much better. All right, participate in the boot camp, and it does mean participate. Answer questions, be present, don't have other things going on because we have a means inside our little metrics. We know if people show up for the training, we know if they're engaged and paying attention, we know a lot of different things about folks. Okay, we can see all this information. Technology is wonderful. So we want you to participate in the boot camp. Fill out the worksheets completely, as I shared with you earlier. Take your diagnostic test. Send me your results. Based on the three diagnostic tests, you will get figure out which one's best for you. And then you're going to register for the exam based on the best diagnostic test. And then set up your coaching call. Coaching calls usually go on Thursday. Click that link. It connects with my schedule. It's set up there for you. If I'm available, I'm available. All right. If not, email me. Let me know when you're available and we'll coordinate our schedules. Not a problem. All right. Now, what's our exam strategy here? I'm not going to really cover the exam strategy. Instead, I'm going to really talk about why people are not successful. One, they are not prepared. You don't have that issue because you're in this training. All right. Or if you're thinking about getting this training, this is where it is. You're going to be prepared. We give you all the tools and more, everything you need. All right. So you will be prepared. Work. People don't leave you alone and allow you to prepare for work. They have other projects going on. Commit an hour a day. If you can just make that commitment right now, one hour per day and do something. Go as far as you can in the content every day for one hour. You will be on track to get it done 90 days, no more than 90 days after the boot camp. Okay. If you've got a tighter schedule, you can increase your time per day. If you've got a longer schedule, meaning six months, then you can reduce your time per day. But we want you to get it done in 90 days because that's the window for the guarantee. And if you commit one hour per day right now, just make that commitment outside of the boot camp, which is three hours per day when we're in the boot camp, you will have no problem. And tell people, leave you alone. Efficient, focused study gets you through this content quickly and effectively so you can pass the exams. If you're answering questions and you're trying to get this done, trying to get that done, it's not effective, focused study, and it doesn't really work really well. Okay. That's another reason we give you the worksheets. Okay. And if you think about it, you're, you got worksheets. I'll come back to that in a second. We're giving you all the modes of learning. Personal issues. Any personal issues you have going on, deal with those. 
okay if they're distracting to you then you just need to pause on preparing for the exams a minute and then just come back to that what we're doing in 2021 we haven't done this before okay if you can come to any of the boot camps throughout the year your 90-day window will begin at the end of your last boot camp all right so say you come through january and then february something happens you can't take your exams and it takes you all the way through you know march and you just can't study you can't take your exams whatever it is we have another class in april come to april at the end of april your 90 days will reset and you'll start again okay and then we're going to do another series of classes in the fall the dates yet to be determined but we will do three more in the fall so you can do it again all right things are happening, personal issues, work issues, anything happening that's going to stop you from preparing adequately, not a problem. Just come back to the boot camp and prepare appropriately. Vacation. I like to share this one because you're not going to study on vacation. You're going to kill some brain cells, right? So don't even plan to study on vacation. All right. Say, oh, I'm going to study. And that's when I'll have time. No, go on vacation. Relax. Come back from vacation spend a week getting caught up back at work, spend another week getting back into studying and preparing for the test, and then take your exam. So about two weeks after vacation should be a good window to actually take the certification exams. And the number one reason people are not successful is they don't follow the strategy. They don't do the things you're going to learn how to prepare for the exams. They don't do those things. They don't follow the strategy in the exam itself. They just do something totally different. Had someone even prepare. She said, okay, Randy, you know, I wasn't successful. I said, well, what happened? Did you follow the strategy? No. Well, why not? Well, I kind of felt overwhelmed. I thought I could answer all the questions. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Then I'm like, well, then maybe that's why you weren't successful. We've been doing this for 10 years now. I'm going on 11. We kind of know what we're talking about and we know what works. In addition to following the strategy, the number one reason people are successful, mindset. Commitment to get it done. All right. So earlier I said commit one hour to prepare for the test. Now I'm asking you to commit to success. And if you say I'm going to get this certification, you will get it. OK, it's the ones that are kind of lackadaisical. Their boss told them to do it and they're really not engaged. They're kind of, eh, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Whatever. They kind of that's how they do on the test. Eh, I don't know. They'll figure it out. OK, but if you come in and say I'm going to get this done, I will do what you tell me and you will win. We will win together and you will be successful. Okay, so follow our strategy. Always have the coaching call, and I'm always here to help you, not only in the certification exams, but also career coaching, okay, proposals, supply chain strategies. So long as you're involved in the training, I'm here to help you. All right, so keep that in mind. Oh, here we go. Before we go into the competition, I'm going to go to the questions, right? Let me go see if there's any questions, but get ready for the competition. Remember everything I talked about, and we will. All right, all right let me go ahead and check some questions. Uh, boom. Questions, questions. No questions. Are you kidding me? Instead, I've got questions for you, right? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oops. That's, that's for the army guys. All right. Here we go. These are it. Now what we're going to do. All right. I'm feeling generous today. 25 bucks. 25 bucks is on the line. Not 10, but 25. I teased you before bonus time because you're still with me. I'm going to up the ante. $25 wherever the winner is. And this is what we're going to do at the end of every day throughout the entire three weeks. All right. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's begin. Where do I live? Just pick an answer. Pick it there. Time counts. The faster you answer the question, the faster you answer the question, the more points you get. If you take your time, you don't answer quickly, all different things, and you don't get many questions, you don't get as many points. All right. So Participating in this. All right, where am I? Where does Randy live? Where do I live? And the answer is Florida. Outstanding. Now let's see who answered the fastest. There we go. Oh, you guys were all on track at the same time. Well done. And I do have a tiebreaker. So don't worry. If we tie, not a problem. What do you do to get in the virtual classroom at start time? I was very specific about what to do. All right. Call Randy. I'm not going to answer because I'm preparing for class and I'm presenting the class. Reload the start page. Scream at the computer. Hope the computer starts. None of the above. What specifically should you do at the beginning of class? That's correct. Reload the start page. Reload the start page. 
Outstanding. All right, good. See, see how it kind of separated out, right? See how it kind of separated out there? Somebody was faster than everyone else. Let's go on. What is our backup plan if the technology fails in Showtime, the virtual classroom? What is our backup plan? Throw the computer. No. Randy will give us a link to Google Meeting via email. Stop for the day and get some coffee. None of the above. What do you think? What do you think? All right. The answer is three, two, one. Randy will send a meet. That's correct. If things go clunky and things start to shut down, gets crazy, that's why I check in. That's also at the end of every section. Kind of gives me a chance to check in with the system, make sure the system's functioning properly. If things are just totally clunky, I'll tell you, hey, go on to plan B, and I'll send you a link to a Google meeting, and I'll see you over there. All right, here we go. Nice, nice, very good. Keep it coming, keep it coming. How do you get your password for the online training portal? How do you get the password for the online training portal? Check my email. Well, that should get you in there. But what if you forget your password? You don't know how to do it. Call Randy. No, don't do that. What should you do? Right there at the end, at the bottom, should be one thing, right? Right there at the bottom, as in any website, any membership portal, it says, click forgot password. Click forgot password. That's correct. Okay, that's what you want to click. That'll be the fastest way to get it done. You're studying at 3 o'clock in the morning. Click the fact, forget the password, and you'll be all set. And I say 3 o'clock in the morning because we have people on the other side of the world who will be 3 o'clock in the afternoon for them. So we'll see how it goes. All right, good to go, Alex. You're rocking. Good job. Good job. What to do? What do I do? Not what do I do. What do I do when I get my workbook on Monday? Or right now, what should you do with the workbook? What should you do with the workbook? What's the one thing you should do with the workbook? Okay, go into the training portal, downloads for week one, worksheets. You want to download those and do something. What do you want to do with that? What do you want to do with those worksheets? Answer is print it out. Just print it out because that's going to be your guide, your outline for the exam. What do I take notes about? That's what you want to take notes about. As I mentioned earlier, the modes of learning. In this training, you have auditory learning, my voice and talking to you. You have visual learning with the screen and the presentation, which has a lot of moving parts to kind of keep things going with different colors. And you have kinetic learning when you have to write things down. So you have all modes of learning in this training. And when you combine all three, then it's a winning combination and you will be successful. All right, good job. Here we go. Alex is rocking. When are you ready to take the CPSM certification exams? When? When do you know you're ready to take the CPSM certification exams? What do you think? All right. After the boot camp? Maybe. When I pass the diagnostic test? Maybe. When I complete all modules in the online training? Maybe. But there's one thing, and that one thing is... When I pass the diagnostic test, that's correct. That gives you the key indicator that you're ready to move forward and take the actual certification exams. Okay. Good job, everyone. What is, what is, not what in, what is the number one reason people fail the exam? What's the number one reason people fail the exam? And I'm going to hammer this home again and again and again because it's such a simple reason. All right. What is the number one reason people fail the exam? All right, looks like we have two, one. The answer is correct, not follow a strategy. I'm going to share with you a strategy. It works. It gives you a focus when you're worried about time, when you're nervous about all the exam content, all these different things. The strategy I tell you is you're going to focus each question. You're going to do a certain thing, and you're going to move through the content quickly and efficiently, and you're going to do it in a way that works and keeps you on task and focused. Well done. Good job. Alex, good job. Woo now, you're probably giggling saying, Randy, how can you be so excited? I don't know. I did not expect this thing this little quiz that happens at the end of every day to be so exciting, all right, because people get excited about it. They get engaged. What's really fun, especially is you have someone that's a leader for all questions, and the last question, somebody pops up and just leaps to the front and knocks off the leader, and that happened to a couple people, and they weren't happy. I got a bad review that day, all right? So 
Good job, Alex. I'm going to send you over a $25 gift card for Amazon. Enjoy. All right. The winner is Alex. Well done. So if you're watching this training and not sure if you want to get engaged in the actual training itself, we do have a short course that you can take that's going to share with you different lessons that I've selected that are most valuable to people. You just need to go to cpsmtraining.com. It'll pop up. Go ahead and engage in that short course or go to supply chain management.training go to the catalog you'll see it over there too you can go into the short course and it will just give you the experience that people are having today it will also share with you the content that you'll see during the boot camp all right what you get when you invest in the training you get the virtual training you get the coaching and the live boot camp experience that you're experiencing right now we also have our pass or we pay the re-exam fees guarantee. Within 90 days after the boot camp, if you're not successful on the exams, we pay the re-exam fees so long as you do what we tell you to do. And it's very clear. And if you do what we tell you to do, you're gonna be successful anyway. So don't worry about it. Just do what we tell you to do. And we're not gonna worry about this either. All right. And how much 1997 for those where we have, but we have some folks in our Army Ignited program, which also includes the CPSM exam fees. So that's a little bit more expensive because we pay for those fees in your fee for the Army. So you don't have to worry about anything. Just let us know. We take care of you for our Army folks. All right. That's the Army Ignited program. So if you're a veteran or not a veteran, but you're active duty Army, the Army actually pays for you to go through this certification. Okay. And it includes everything not only do you get everything that you see on the screen here but we also include the cpsm exam fees included in your tuition when you guys come through the program all that's included all right and make sure you sign up cpsmtraining.com five steps we talked about those five steps ism does not endorse this program it doesn't endorse any program it just provides training to the instructors and we created the program ourselves. If you have any questions about ISM, let me know. I'll be happy to point you in the right direction. And now, do you have any questions about anything whatsoever other than what do I have to do to win <laughs> every single day? I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to go to the questions and I will be prepared to answer any questions anyone has about anything. All right. Looking good. Looking good. Thanks, Richard. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, definitely love to have energy here. And that's what keeps you guys engaged too. All right. So I didn't see any questions, but that's okay. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email. I'll respond as quickly as possible. Make sure you're all squared away. Next week, we get started on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. I'll send out the link, get everyone engaged, get everyone ready to go. And we're going to have a wonderful week. It's a lot of content, so be well rested. Make sure you have your snacks and your water next to you. We take a couple of breaks so you can go to the bathroom, get more water, get more snacks. But a lot of stuff's going on. And what you saw today is a typical experience with a lot more questions because we go through a lot of content. And day one, just be prepared to be overwhelmed because a lot of stuff. But by the end of day two, people get the rhythm and they're very, very successful. All right. All right. With that, I'm going to let you guys go. Yep, definitely took a minute to figure out how to use the poll everywhere.com. Okay, so you will be prepared next week. And I'm telling you, it's exciting. I don't know why, but it just gets crazy. And uh, But it's going to be fun every single day. At the end of the day, people just get engaged in it. I'm sure if we had them all lined up in a classroom, they'd be leaping over the table trying to win the money, which is always fun to do. All right, so with that... Have a wonderful day. Thank you for participating. I will be posting a replay later. So if you have anyone you want to share this with to let them know how it's going to go, I'd appreciate that because we still have space in the training that we can get everyone engaged with, engaged with and involved in the training. And if you think about your entire team, if everyone understands supply chain management with a base foundation, right? Then we all start to operate from a common thought process. And so when you're in another part of the world and another part of the United States, another state, and you have your team building plans for you, right? This is where this training comes into place. So when you say, hey, I need an RFP, they know exactly what you're thinking about. Hey, getting ready to do a negotiations, they know the process you want them to go through. Hey, I need forecasting, they know what that means, all right? You're building plans, you're setting that foundation so you can execute better. All right. So with that, have a wonderful day. Enjoy your weekend. And I'm going to see you guys next week.